Sorry, we'll be ready to begin in just a moment. Okay, well, welcome everybody to this conversation um, celebrating the the future of, of the work at, at MassArt. And um, uh, we'll be getting started in just a moment. My name's Ian Goodstein. I'm co-director of the um, Worldwide Teach on Climate and Justice. And we're very pleased to be part of this event today. And welcome back, David. Um, we we're just waiting for MassArt to, uh, to, to kick us off. <clears throat> Hopefully they won't literally kick us off. <laughs> well put. Yeah, for, for those of you who are uh, um, signing in, we, we will be joining a live presentation at the Massachusetts College of Arts and Design that will go for um, 40 minutes. And then we will be... Um, at, after that live presentation ends, then we will um, remain for another twenty minutes. If you if you want for um, more informal conversation among those of us who are on, so thank you all for joining us. Hello, good morning. Um, welcome to the Academic Affairs and the Sustainability in the Curriculum Committee Symposium, Sustaining the Next 150 Years at MassArt. My name is Brenda Molife. I am the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here at MassArt. I do need to let everyone know that this first panel and only this panel is being recorded for a future broadcast in partnership with Bard College and ACAD. Prior to starting the program, I would like to request that we all take a moment to acknowledge the land that we re reside on has a history that far precedes our own. The campus of Massachusetts College of Art and Design is located on the lands of indigenous peoples, such as the Wampanoag and Massachusetts. We make this land acknowledgement to pay respect to these communities, past, present, and future and recognize the painful history of erasure and ongoing violence toward indigenous peoples in North America and across the world. We acknowledge this part of our history to affirm our values to pursue a more just, compassionate and equitable learning environment. Thank you for taking this moment with me. I also want to thank members of the Sustainability Committee who have worked tirelessly over winter break from locales as far away as Paris and Costa Rica to make sure today is an informative, enlightening and transformational experience. Please join me in thanking Margie Levine, Katie Ham, and especially Kate Russell for helping to make this symposium possible. And I just asked Margie how to pronounce her last name and I just completely messed it up. So Margie Levine, thank you. Over the course of the day, members of the MassArt community will be participating in discussions focusing on climate change, sustainable, recyclable and reused materials utilized in art production and sustainable dyes to name a few topics. At the conclusion of this morning session, there will be refreshments and student groups will be highlighting their work in the Sunrise Movement, the Bird Group, and information will be available about the ReStore, all of which you can see in the Sustainability Corridor. MassArt has a very busy week this week, with the symposium being one of many events. The culmination of our week will be the installation of our uh, 13th president, Dr. Mary Kay Grant, Dr. Grant is a national leader in public higher education with more than 30 years of experience championing the arts, deepening community partnerships, cultivating civic engagement, and fostering access uh, to diversity, equity, and inclusion across higher education. She is the vice chair of the board of directors for the Norman Rockwell Museum, the board chair of Campus Compact, and recently served on the search committee for the new Commissioner of Higher Education in Massachusetts. It is my honor to welcome President Grant to provide further remarks.
Thank you, Brenda. And thank you for your very warm and generous introduction. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here today. And I wanna echo Brenda's thanks um, to all who helped organize this symposium. It is filled with rich content, meaningful discussion, and a great deal of expertise, passion, and commitment. So thank you so much for doing this as part of this week as we launch our 150th anniversary celebration. I wanna thank our ACAD colleagues uh, for contributing to the discussion. And I wanna give a special shout out because we, um, I'm so delighted, you know, when we think about sustainability and continuity, we think about um, what that means in terms of individuals, institutions, and the connections between individuals and institutions. And I am delighted that um, a champion of, of this institution is here with us today. And she's also a leader of one of our ACAD schools. And it is Kim Pinder who served mightily as the interim president of Mass and during, during one of our most challenging times, Kim joined MassArt as provost, and shortly thereafter, we had a global pandemic, and she became the interim president. So, Kim, I thank you, and now she is dean of the, the School of Art at Yale University and an ACAD colleague, so we get to still do this good work together. So, Kim, uh, so great to have you here today, and thank you for all that you've done for MassArt and for these kind of conversations that we're having today. Deeply appreciate you, my friend, and it's great to see you. Um, and you know, it's important that we have these conversations. It's important that we do this work. And I am so inspired every day by the faculty of MassArt, the way you teach, the way you think about these issues, the way you galvanize our students and thinking about the wider world. I'm deeply impressed by our students and how they do that too, how they are holding us accountable to do better do better as an institution, do better as individuals, and do better in our artistic practices. It is all important and it all matters. I appreciate the work that Eben or did last year with ACAD and schools across the country with the worldwide teaching. And I was so proud that Mass College of Art and Design was part of that. And I am so inspired by the leadership of the faculty of this institution, how we connect with the colleges of the Fenway to do this work, to offer educational programs and moments to come together. And if you want to take a look at some of that beautiful work in action, take a look at the beautiful table made from sustainable wood that is out in the hall that was done by Mitch Ryerson, Wu, and Ellen, and others who teach in our, 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 our furniture program in our wood shop here. It is absolutely spectacular about how we can and must do better and what we can be doing. And as I turn the panel over to Eben, and Eben, thank you so much. I know you were getting things warmed up as we were beginning the program on this end. I wanna just take a moment and leave you with a quote from Rachel Carson, who said that we need to inspire curiosity and care about what we are in the process of losing. And I think that's what we're doing here today and every day, curiosity and care. And that's where the arts comes together to inspire us, to make us curious, to think about the wider world, to think about how we bring people together for conversations, to understand our place in that wider world and our ultimate responsibility as stewards to do better than what we are presently doing. Too much is at stake. And so literally and figuratively, let's gather around tables like the one that Mitch has created to have this conversation, but more importantly, let's always work towards taking action. So thank you so much. It's a privilege to be here with you. Thank you for organizing this. And I'm delighted to turn it over to Evan to kick off today's symposium. Thank you very much. Well, Mary, thank you very much for uh, um, your keynote remarks there to get us started. Um, and, and, and thank you to, to Mass Art for the fabulous leadership that you all have demonstrated um, uh, in working with us the last few years. Um, uh, I want to talk briefly about the worldwide teaching on climate and justice um, and how at this particular moment in time, we are and must be stronger together. Um, that this is, is not something that uh, any one person or any in one institution can, um, can address, but, th but that we need to come cover together collectively um, at, at this moment. I, I like the 150 year focus of this uh, conversation 150 years from now will be something like 2170, I think. Um, and uh, I also like the fact that we started with a uh, land acknowledgement um, because that forces us to remember that there have been people living in this part of the world for 10,000 years, um, up until the last hundred or so pretty sustainably. Um, and, uh, and, and that there will be people living here for another 10,000 years. Um, the, despite the 
challenges of climate change, you know, human uh, presence on earth is not going to come to an end. And I think that as educational institutions that can think this far into the future, um, that's that's in many ways our unique power, right? It is to, to envision what that future might be. And, and I think move beyond the kind of apocalyptic parallel paralysis around climate change that has gripped so many people. And um, so let me talk for just a moment about the worldwide teach-in this year. Um, we will return to that conversation um, in just a moment uh, or at the end of this conversation um, at about 1040. So uh, my screen is there. Um, so um, again, um, my name is Evan Goodstein. I'm an economist and I, I direct the graduate programs in sustainability at Bard College in New York. I'm also with David Blockstein, the co-director of the Worldwide Teach-In on Climate and Justice. And um, this is a, a global educational initiative that's been underway for four years. Um, and our goal is to engage 300 and, uh, or 400 colleges, universities, high schools around the world uh, in or around the week of March 29th, um, uh, the middle of the semester, um, in substantive dialogue uh, around climate justice and climate solutions. And the real vision is to, the theory of change behind the teach-in um, is, is, is to move beyond the climate concerned educators who are already doing a good job in this space, right? Many of our colleagues actually are professionally engaged in climate education or some subset, not many, some small subset, let's say, are professionally engaged in that work. Um, and at every college and university in the world, there are you know, 20 or 30 students who, for whom this is, you know, at the heart and the passion of what they're doing and what they're learning professionally. Um, but in order to stabilize the climate, um, we need a global community of tens of millions of people uh, acting as citizens and as volunteers um, in their careers, um, as consumers, as investors, um, at, who are taking advantage of all the opportunities to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that are out there. Uh, things that we can do that can save us money and improve the quality of life, uh, improve justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, make the world um, a stronger um, and uh, more beautiful place, all of those things. But we need tens of millions of, of people doing that. And as educators, we need to engage them in that work. So the, the core idea of the worldwide teaching is how do we reach beyond the climate experts who are already doing it, uh, both among our students and our faculty and staff, um, to reach the ever widening circle of climate concern people who aren't yet incorporating climate conversations, climate um, ideas, climate solutions, climate careers into their courses in philosophy or religion or science uh, or art. Uh, uh, how, how can we get all artists to think of themselves as climate educators? Um, and that really is the core of the work that we are doing. And once again, really appreciate the leadership uh, of, of Mass Art in this work. Um, so uh, pleased to be partnering with you all. Um, and I want to leave you just with, a, with, a, with an image, not an artistic image, but an image. Um, so this is uh, our map, which may be artistic um, in the right context. Uh, and we need your help to fill this map out, right? This is our first 150 organizations around the world that are participating. Uh, people are coming back after the new year. Um, and if you know any educator in the world who is climate concerned uh, and growing more so, Please tell them about the worldwide teach-in on climate injustice. Um, we have these conversations every Wednesday at 10 Eastern and also at nine in the evening uh, Eastern in New, uh, New York time. So uh, we are eager to talk to these climate concerned educators, support them, help them figure out ways that they can talk about climate change across the curriculum, across their campuses, um, and really move students beyond climate despair and themselves actually as faculty beyond climate to despair to real climate engagement, because we will be around 150 years from now. Humans will be on this planet 
And we want to build as rich and just and as prosperous a world for our descendants as we possibly can. So thank you very much. And now I'm turning it over to my colleague, David Blopstein. Thank you very much, Eben. And, and uh, it is our uh, pleasure and honor to be uh, part of this uh, um, august uh, symposium at the uh, Massachusetts College of Arts and Design. My, my role here is to simply transition to say that, as you can see, we, um, the Bard College and the World Wide Teach-In have a strong um, focus on integration and engagement with the arts. We're delighted that uh, Mass, arts has, Mass Art has been the first um, art college of art and design to hold a uh, climate teach-in in our partnership. And one of the reasons that we're here today and that some of you are here today is so that uh, we will have many other colleges in arts, of arts and design to participate with us. So I want to um, thank Mass Art and turn to um, Emily Cobb, who is an assistant professor of uh, jewelry and uh, metal smithing at Mass Art and is uh, representing the uh, Committee on Sustainability in the curriculum. And um, she will be leading a session now to explain mass arts engagement with us. So thank you, Emily, and, and all of your colleagues. Thank you, David. It was a pleasure to serve as chair of the Sustainability and Curriculum Committee last year when mass art uh, first held our worldwide teaching entitled Art, Climate, and Justice. We had over 100 participants uh, join us through Zoom for a three-hour night-long event that included 18 panelists composed of Mass Art faculty, alumni, staff, current students, as well as distinguished guests from around the world. Each panelist presented and discussed how climate action and social justice relates to the curriculum and creative practice. Panelists also shared ideas about how they are tackling important sustainability issues through innovative solutions. Current Mass Art students also participated as moderators and presenters and helped facilitate the chat and the Q&A portions after each panel discussion. The night was divided into three main categories, sustainability in the curriculum, climate action and creative practice, and art, climate, and justice. The event also helped us bring visibility and support to an important sustainability in the curriculum project, the Mass Art Climate Action Plan, a vision for action at Mass Art from 2020 to 2030. Our committee is grateful that so many people took part in this special event. We will hope to be an annual occurrence, which we're actually about to hear about in a few moments. And we hope that this continues for years to come. Now I would like to introduce MassArt Studio Foundation faculty, Ava Federa, Director of Alumni Relations, Darlene Gillen, and painting major in sustainability minor, Haley Johnson. These are three key individuals that helped make last year's teach-in possible. <clears throat> Thank you, Emily. Last year was my first year as faculty at MassArt. Serving on the Sustainability and Curriculum Governance Committee, I learned about the incredible work that my colleagues were doing both in and outside of the classroom, as well as the ardent dedication of mass art staff, students, and alumni to climate justice and sustainability. As much as I found it exhilarating to learn of our shared focus and passion, I also felt frustrated that it wasn't broadly known throughout the mass art community, let alone celebrated and supported. Too often in academia, it can feel like working in a vacuum, siloed by subject, department, or school, and only intensified during the pandemic. When I heard about the worldwide teach-in on climate and justice organized by my alma mater, Bard College, I thought it would be a fantastic opportunity for the committee to showcase the inspiring work of our community while underscoring, underscoring the critical role that art and art activism play in the climate justice movement. Our 2022 teach-in focused on work, projects, and practices that have already happened or are currently taking place. We invited faculty, staff, students, and alumni to share their outstanding array of global projects, work, and inspiration. In doing so, we connected with each other and began to feel a strong sense of collective and community through our shared vision of what we can do as artists to address the climate crisis. 
The teach-in also created a wealth of collaborative knowledge and resources for faculty to integrate into pre-existing syllabi and curriculum, or as a starting point to create new projects and classes. Organizing, in organizing the teach-in, we created a small working group of individuals who brought different strengths to the table. For someone like me, overwhelmed at the prospect of organizing an event of this proportion, Darlene was a beacon of cool, calm, and collected with her amazing understanding of event coordination. And with that, I'll pass the mic to Darlene. Thanks, Ava. Hello, everyone. I'm Darlene Gill, and I'm the Alumni Relations Director here at MassArt and a proud alum of Class of 2012 with an MSAE. Um, I'm here to provide. I'm here to provide a brief update on the event planning aspects of the teach-in. Um, at the time we were approached by Bard to participate in the worldwide teach-in, the sustainability in the curriculum committee was made up of 18 faculty, a studio manager, administrative staff, and students from a cross-section of academic and administrative areas of mass art. From this committee, we formed a smaller sustainability working group of six folks to plan the event. We also enlisted three colleagues from institutional advancement, youth programs, and technology to join the working group. We attended information sessions offered by BARD and explored the teach-in resources that they made available to host institutions. We then ad adapted the sample teach-in format format to fit the scope of what we thought could be possible for mass art to produce in a three month planning window. Due to the continuing COVID pandemic and the uncertainty about hosting an in-person event on mass arts campus at the time, we decided to host a virtual three hour teaching via Zoom. The working group collaborate, collaborated with the full sustainability committee on the overarching themes and worked together to refine the event program. Many faculty on the committee paired up with fellow faculty, students, former students who are now alumni and current students to present on the panels. A real strength of the sustainability working group, as Ava mentioned, was that it combined faculty expertise in sustainability, social justice, creative practice, and producing symposia with administrative strengths in event planning, marketing communications, and tech support. In order to reach our audiences from the mass art community and beyond, uh, we created a web presence for the event uh, that linked to an Eventbrite invitation for RSVPs. We promoted the event through social media, our college's web calendar, email marketing, and posters on campus. We also enlisted the help of campus partners to help us promote the event through their channels and their audiences. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Haley Johnson, class of 2023, painting with a sustainability minor. Haley is the artist who created the beautiful paintings of the warblers that um, is fe the featured title slide for the symposium. Haley? Thank you, Darlene. Um, the teaching and courses taken in the minor in sustainability at MassArt have done a great job in integrating theory into personal practice. In other words, students learn about sustainability in the classroom and are given the tools to bring those ideas and issues into their studios. Um, the teaching was a great way for students and professors from different backgrounds and majors to collaborate and look at sustainability through different lenses. I was a part of the planning committee and found that our combined excitement and organized planning skills were the keys that allowed the event to take shape. Um, students are incredibly important and young people to include in conversations surrounding sustainability um, so I was delighted when student involvement was viewed as one of the most important parts of the night during the planning stages. Young people need to be involved in discussions surrounding sustainability as we're the ones that we will have the power to change the world for the better and pass down the same ideas to future generations. On the night of the teach-in, every panel concluded with a Q&A session moderated by two students, one guiding the discussion and the other voicing questions about the chat. I was the student moderator to the sustainability in the curriculum portion of the night, which included discussions about intersectional and interdisciplinary approaches to teaching, contemporary art in the climate crisis, and communication design and climate change. I found the question and answer session to be a great way to engage the guests in the teaching and an opportunity for speakers to elaborate on their presentations in a more informal way. Student groups were also involved in the night, which presented an opportunity to talk about how sustainability is integrated in our campus. For example, the ReStore was a valuable asset to the discussion. They're a student-run organization that provides used goods to the mass art community to repurpose. This year, 
with on-campus activities and more in-person involvement, I can't wait to see what we can accomplish and who we can inspire. Next to speak is Chair on the Sustainability in the Curriculum Committee and Faculty in Sculpture, Margie Ann Levine. Thanks, Haley. Uh, my name is Margie and I'm an iron caster. Uh, that may seem incongruous given that this Dirty Foundry Girl is the face of the Sustainability Symposium today, but it's actually quite representative of our initiatives this year. Uh, this year, which also marks the 150th anniversary of MassArt, our committee has chosen to focus our efforts internally and examine how sustainability can be integrated and interpreted in the curriculum um, completely across campus. Within our community, there are programs, classes, and individuals that focus on these topics specifically, but it's equally important that we create opportunities to promote best practices and a more conscious philosophy through all departments and disciplines, even the ones considered dirty. Our goal for the 2023 teach-in is to encourage the mass art community to examine any and all of our methodologies through the lens of sustainability. The format will incorporate live demonstrations, presentations, and discussions by faculty, staff, and students, where people can share their research, experiments, and knowledge, both in and out of the classrooms, within their areas, and reaching across campus. This includes innovative processes, studying and choosing eco-conscious alternatives, waste mitigation, acknowledgement of cradle-to-grave impact, as well as potential offsets and exploration of regenerative possibilities. Throughout the week, we hope to raise awareness and emphasize more sustainable approaches to art making, while also highlighting, analyzing, and cataloging the materials and methodologies that make up mass art. In this way, we are honoring the expertise within our own community, artists, educators, professionals, researchers, and students who are specialists and innovators in their respective fields, as well as charging ourselves to examine our own practices as we move forward teaching and learning from each other. It is my honor to serve as chair of the Sustainability in the Curriculum Committee. And through these collaborative efforts, we hope to create a continuing discourse that will sustain the next 150 years at MassArt. It's my pleasure to introduce two of our committee members working on the 2023 teach-in, Erica Hayes, a senior in Fine Arts 3D, and Liz Reiser, director of youth programs. Thank you, Margie. Hi, I'm Erica Hayes. I'm a senior in sculpture focusing on regenerative art practices. I'm thrilled to be part of the committee this year, um, administrating the teach-in and have the opportunity to use my experience as a mass art student to contribute to a more sustainable future for our school. As a student and young person generally, my biggest anxiety is the future that I'm going to be living in in 10, 20, or 50 years. And I'd like to have a livable future, as would most of us, I think. Um, in my own life, I'm wholly dedicated to regenerative and sustainable practices, approaching everything I can from an interconnected long-term point of view. Access to skills and information, as well as having the community and support to um, take action and create a livable, equitable, and enjoyable future are vitally important. The worldwide climate teach-in here at MassArt presents a cross-disciplinary college-wide opportunity for anyone to participate in that knowledge sharing and community building to any extent. I'm really looking forward to meeting students, faculty, and staffs inter interested in similar topics and sharing information and research. Through discussions, through the discussions that I hope we have during the teach-in, if the student body is interested, the topics brought up can be integrated into the curriculum through existing syllabi and new courses. In my eyes, one of the best parts of the worldwide climate teach-in is the momentum to incorporate these topics more frequently and formally into curriculums, find common interests, and share information across departments. Liz, thank you. Oh, thanks, Erica. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Reiser. Um, in 2022, we realized how far reaching the teaching could be as we were offering it virtually. 
We were communicating through and with alumni and our global neighbors and highlighting great work being done. For this year's teaching, we've decided to be more student-centered and explorative of possibilities yet to be discovered and more inclusive. Inclusive as Marjorie reminds us of some of the dirty fields that we work in. One logistical way of offering an inclusive approach is through a survey we created and sent out prior to the winter break. This survey went to all faculty, students, and staff, inviting them to participate in this year's teaching. Integrating issues of sustainability into art making early on so that it permeates students' approaches to their thinking and the materials and processes they are practicing is a shift that we are all asking for. For young people, this is very important. And I'm excited to bring mass art youth programs more and more into the sustainability conversation. The many global issues they face are daunting. We can empower them by encouraging them to find solutions with us, making sure they feel included and lending space for them to use their voice. Whatever discipline they are in, they can cultivate a lens of sustainability and ask questions with that in mind. While much of the artist's work is done individually, the collaborative process is also essential. We are lucky to be surrounded by creative problem solvers. Bringing young people into this community for our sake and for theirs benefits us all. Young people are ready for the shift from the me generation to the we generation. And we are being reminded again and again that we are part of this extraordinary and miraculous world we live in, just a part that we have so much to learn and to contribute. It's both humbling and empowering, and we can do together far more than what we can do alone. So thanks, and I'll hop point it back to Margie. So I'm just asking for questions. Great. Okay, I'm back. Um, so we're going to open this up to questions from the Zoom audience uh, while we have them briefly. Uh, and y'all in the, our live audience will have time to ask questions as we move into the next phase of our symposium. Um, so Austin is going to feed me some questions, maybe, if there are some. Are there any? Okay, so we know everything and no one has any questions. Um, so that's fine. Um, does anybody in our audience here have a question that they wanna shout out since we don't have any online questions at the moment? All right, great. Hello, Paula, how can people on campus let the committee know that they want to be involved in the teaching just in case they miss that survey that was sent out? That's such a good question. Um, so we're gonna be opening up opportunities to reach out to us obviously throughout the day today. Um, and we're gonna be sending out follow-up surveys uh, starting really soon in case they missed the first one because it was hectic at the end of the semester. Um, and hopefully people through the symposium today are also gonna start recognizing names and partial faces of who to track down on campus. Um, I can say with ease that I live in the Collins basement and anybody who has any questions can can reach out to me. Um, but we'll definitely be sending out, you know, keep be on the lookout for more emails and more surveys. Um, and if something doesn't seem quite applicable, reach out with any questions because we want to make sure that everything is covered. Are there any other questions? I'm too short for this podium. Yeah. Uh, so Ava, right? Do you want to talk about this? Um, okay. My mask up there too. It is. Yeah. Um. Uh, we were asked how we found out about the worldwide teach-in. Um, I actually, you know, as an al alum of Bard College, I was on their email list. Um, I was super excited to hear that they had a graduate program in sustainability and even was like, could I do that as an artist? Um, but when I heard about the worldwide teach-in and I was still so new at mass art and on the sustainability and curriculum committee, I thought this would be such a cool opportunity to really 
uh, put mass art literally on their map, but also really uh, demonstrate how incredibly committed to these topics so many artists are and so many of us in the mass art community. Um, I really think that one of the major issues for me as an artist working in this topic was always feeling like everyone was sort of working individually and not on this united front. And I think the, the teaching really helped us feel that like united vision. Um, and I'm really excited for the upcoming one because I think last year was super experimental and we kind of were flying by the seats of our pants. So this uh, this semester or this you know coming teaching is gonna really, um, it's gonna be exciting to be a part of. Thank you. <laughs> Mask. Okay. So we do have a question on the chat that I am so not qualified to answer, um, but I'll I'll try. So the question is, I'd like to hear more about the vulnerable communities affected by climate change and how mass art is working to ameliorate that suffering. Not qualified. Does anybody in the audience have a good answer? I do think it's it's really important to acknowledge that that, that all of these discussions that we're having are coming from a point of privilege, right? Um, and, and I think that we should all recognize that. I don't honestly know what mass art is doing to ameliorate, ameliorate the suffering in other, uh, more vulnerable communities, but we should probably look into it. Yeah, Luann. I want to say that, you know, one of the things that mass art has begun to do, and in some cases successfully, is to integrate more within the neighborhoods in which it's located to a lot of different, uh, levels of community within that. And I think everything that we do from connecting to the local school system, to the local neighborhoods with like our, even our, our uh, the name of our band, the art. The art mobile, yeah. Yeah, even that to get people to know who we are and to, intend to, and to engage with them so that we can hear in what ways we can also lend a hand. Also, it inspires new and younger artists and creatives within the community that 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 go out to engage and see where their power lies in terms of being able to get the support they need, maybe from us, or maybe just from learning how to with us. That's, I hope people could hear that. I think it's really important. It also strikes me that we should, I know that this was part of our intention, so I should mention that we want to be making sure that we're working with the Center for Art and Community Partnerships and, uh, and JET and youth programs um, during the, you know, to, during the planning for the worldwide teaching and encourage them to, you know, put some programming together as well. That's, that's what I was going to mention, was that the Center for Art and Community Partnership, uh, I think that they participated in the last forum, yeah. and so they are um, actively working to connect with our neighborhood partners. Um, same thing with Upper Bombers, we're looking at the relationship with students coming into the high school, so I think that back and forth is very, is very much part of the way we're working in the community. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I would suggest that we're looking at the how are our graduate programs connected to this? You know, those graduate programs, there's some of those students, some of those faculty are working in other communities. So part of it is to also understand more deeply the ways in which we're working with communities. Sometimes institutions don't even know uh, what our own complete story is about the ways in which they're doing it. So that may be one of the things, and I think that's what the survey can also help get is yeah. how are we already in community? Where are we missing? Yeah. What's the right way for us to show up? And then thinking about the partnership, the college, the Fenway, the Co-Art Consortium, how do we work within those group of schools uh, to impact community? Thank you. That was far more eloquent than I could have ever answered that question. All right. So we're being asked to wrap up from BARD and turn this over to Deborah from ACAD uh, for some last thoughts, right? And we're going to stop sharing this. I don't know how to do that. Well, while they figure out how to stop, stop sharing their screen, um, I will go ahead and start. So I'm Deborah Obalil. I'm president and executive director of ACAD, which is the Association of Independent Colleges of Art and Design. We're a consortium of the leading specialized schools of arts and design across the United States and Canada. And we um, thankfully have a robust history across our membership of really focusing on issues of sustainability and more recently climate justice. Um, 
some folks even who are on this Zoom have been part of those efforts for the past decade plus. Um, we had an initiative called the Partnership for Academic Leadership and Sustainability, which was created and led by, <clears throat> excuse me, Deborah Johnson at Pratt Institute and engaged uh, at some point over its history, all of our member institutions and really focused on connecting faculty and administrators across these member institutions to support efforts in sustainability through curriculum, through facilities initiatives, um, and particularly cross institutional efforts. Many of the faculty would guest speak in each other's courses. Um, there was even a special summer program, which continues to this day, that was created out of that partnership, the Burren College of Art on the western coast of Ireland uh, with faculty from Maryland Institute College of Art, MICA, and Pacific Northwest College of Art, PNCA, uh, called the Global Ecology Studio, which happens every summer and is a fantastic partnership uh, with all those institutions and connecting uh, the local ecology of the Burren area of Ireland, which is particularly unique um, and has tremendous lessons to learn with practices in art studio. Um, now we also, ACAD has a partnership with NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Agency, to create the ACAD NOAA Art and Science Fellowship, which is a fantastic opportunity open to graduates of any level, bachelor's or master's of any ACAD member institution in the past 10 years who have uh, an interest in the intersections between uh, arts and design and sciences, particularly related to um, waterways and fisheries uh, and i'll put a link in the chat where you can find more information about that opportunity we just put the call out for this year's fellowship and it's a tremendous opportunity for graduates with an interest uh, crossing over into the sciences and climate justice uh, and then many ACAD schools over the years have developed sustainability minors, concentrations, majors, and even whole graduate programs uh, focused on issues of the intersections between arts and design and sustainability and climate change. Uh, and you can find all of those programs on our website, acad.org. And you can even search by sustainability uh, as a function to find out which schools have which offerings um, and what might be appropriate for what you're learning, uh, looking to learn more about. So we're thrilled to now be connected to BARD and the Worldwide Climate Teach-In. Uh, we hope to engage more ACAD schools in this effort. Um, thrilled to have had MassArt lead the way. Uh, I know they've been doing great work in this area for many years, uh, so not surprised that they led this. Uh, and it was wonderful to hear about the fantastic success last year and the plans for this year. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back to whomever is making the closing remarks at MassArt. I think that just defaulted to me. Uh, we didn't have plans. Um, we're not really closing. We're closing with Bard and ACAD, and we really appreciate being part of this webinar uh, and being part of the teach-in mm -hmm. in general. And we're going to hop off Zoom and continue what's going to be a really exciting full, full day of programming here at MassArt. Um, so thank you, thank you to to all of you in Zoom land. And we'll see, yeah, we'll see you guys again at 9 p.m. tonight. And we're gonna sign off. Well, yeah. congratulations to everyone uh, for a 150 year symposium. That is quite uh, an accomplishment. So we look forward to re-engaging with you guys later this evening. Um, and for those of you who are on the Zoom call, um, we are now turning the conversation over to a, a more general conversation about the teach-in, how to get involved. And I let me just, preface that remark with, um, you know, uh, uh, the leadership that we had out of uh, the Mass College of Art and Design, just amazing. Um, and it's it, it, and inspiring because this is is exactly what we need at this particular moment in time, right? We, we are living at this truly extraordinary moment in the history of the human species, truly in the sense that the work that we get done or don't get done over the next 10, 20, 30 years is going to profoundly impact those people living 150 years from now. And in fact, those people living 10,000 years from now. Um, and that can be uh, overwhelming, but for me, it's also exciting, right? In many ways, there's never been a more exciting and decisive time to be alive than, than right now. So I know everyone on this call is very busy and has busy lives. So I wanna thank you for being here. But I also uh, 
uh, just want to say that there's no, uh, we can't wait, right? You know, if you are concerned about climate change, your job right right now is to figure out how to mobilize other climate concerned people and bring them together and uh, increase the size of the global community of people who are focused and engaged on this topic. So um, that is the purpose of the Worldwide Teach-In. And um, David, what do you think is the best agenda here for the next 15 minutes? Just open it up to questions or yeah. uh, maybe that's the best, best approach. Yeah, let, let's just open it up to questions. Any questions about the teach-in, how to get involved, what a teach-in is? We have lots of models. I'm glad to talk about those. Lots of shy people on the line. Well, even maybe there, there's the one question I, I think you could. Um, how to get involved, okay. Yeah, just a little bit more as to how, how, how people can get involved. Okay, well, the idea here is what is a teach-in, first of all? I mean, a teach-in is just really a bottom-up conversation about climate change. Um, you know, we're not looking for people to have a movie and a discussion or have a keynote speaker, but really to have a conversation in your community, whether that's a, a K-12 school or a high school, secondary school, college, university, um, and really rely on homegrown talent to drive those conversations. Every university in the world now has got some climate experts and has certainly got lots of climate concern faculty. Um, and so we, we have two basic models at the university level. One is the one that the Mass uh, College of Art and Design did last year, which was just tap, you know, 18 faculty members who cared about climate change, have them come together for an evening on a series of panels related to their particular field, right? So you can have a psychologist who doesn't study climate change, but could certainly talk about climate anxiety and denial for five minutes. Um, you know, you've got a climate, uh, you've got a musician who doesn't know much about climate change, but knows that there isn't a good climate change song out there and why we need a climate change anthem or song. Um, or, uh, you know, have a chemist who isn't a green chemist per se, but could talk about how chemistry is really, you know, at the core of much of the solutions concept right now and give a specific example. So you can get lots of faculty who are concerned about climate change engaged in these dialogues without them being climate experts. And if you've got 15, 20 faculty members at an event, you're automatically going to get 100 students or 200 students. We have another model, which is uh, to actually take this into the classroom. Instead of those faculty coming together for an evening, they could just have that conversation, that half an hour conversation uh, uh, in their classroom about how their discipline is intersecting with climate change. We call that hashtag make climate a class. I've got about 20 BARD faculty signed up who are going to be doing that as kind of part of our teach-in. We've got lots of other models. We've got a climate comedy night, which if you uh, know anybody who wants to lead a conversation on your campus about using comedy and climate change conversation, we've got a template all set up for you. Uh, uh, to, with a few short videos um, and some good discussion questions and even the four best climate jokes on the internet. Um, we've got uh, a, a model for theater groups if they want to do some short plays to drive conversation. Um, so lots of ways you can do this and we're glad to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with anybody who wants to figure out how to do it. I think the key to recognize here is that there is a team waiting to be formed at your school of four or five or eight people that want to organize this. You know, everybody is, you know, 80, 90% of your colleagues are increasingly worried about climate change, staff, faculty, students. If you put out a call to organize a teach-in, um, you will get people saying, yes, I want to help. Um, so this is not something you have to do. We're not asking for a heavy lift. Um, uh, you know, the heavier, the better. I mean, the more people you engage, the better. But uh, getting a conversation is what's started is what is most important. So anything else, David, I should have mentioned there? No, I, I think that's that's quite thorough. Um, I guess maybe one other thing. Somebody put in a uh, question about uh, impact on enrollment, and maybe you just wanted to mention that also about how to connecting with uh, um, your admissions offices and, and uh, local schools and things if you're doing an event. 
Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if, you know, if you, uh, you can get a lot of people excited about this from the point of view of, of their job on campus, right? So if you're holding an event um, at a university, you can invite local high school students to attend. And in fact, you don't even have to, you can just reach out to your admissions office and ask them to do that because they, they're gladly, you know, they're, 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 they've got contacts and they're happy to, uh, to support that kind of activity. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, that's a good strategy as well. If I'll you just, go to, oops, oops, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to jump in actually on the enrollment question, because that is something that we've looked at across ACAD, um, as many of our schools have been focusing on adding sustainability concentrations or minors. Um, mm -hmm. and as I said, a number of them actually have sustainability focused graduate programs, um, and yeah, it definitely over time uh, has impacted enrollment in a positive way. Mm -hmm. We've increasingly seen that arts and design students in particular yeah. um, have uh, a very strong interest in being able to contribute to their field, their disciplines of study in a way that is not negatively impacting the climate. Um, and so the demand for that kind of teaching has risen over the last 10 years um, and hence the creation of those additional concentrations um, and minors and majors, uh, which has, you know, everything our schools do, they're all tuition driven institutions. None of them are highly uh, endowed. And so it's all about driving enrollment in a positive way. Yep. Um, and yeah, and deans and presidents typically love these kinds of initiatives. They, they will support you if you get going on them. Um, and it's not just a this year, right? This is a ongoing process that we all need to take on as educators. So it's not just what happens in March, but how do you create this sort of ongoing dialogue around increasing the conversation around climate change and sustainability in your, in your campus? In terms of resources, we have a great 30 second or 60 second teaser video on the website. You can circulate that to colleagues. There's a 10 minute version of this, which goes into detail about how to organize a teach-in. Um, we've got on our website, the teach-in module link, um, which um, way more detail than, you know, uh, your average bear is gonna wanna get through. But, uh, but if, you, if you do wanna dig in, there's lots of stuff here, including our make climate a class model. Um, and um, uh, the, the most important thing is today or tomorrow, decide that you wanna do this um, and go ahead and put your bubble on the map. Um, and that will get you in the system. Uh, you don't have to commit to anything in particular at this moment. You can just say, I'm planting a flag, you know, in Buenos Aires, where we don't have any flags yet. Um, and that just means something is going to happen. Uh, you can add the details to your bubble um, as time goes on. Um, but we need for momentum. <clears throat> We need to move uh, move this map, start getting it really filled up. Um, and that's really what also drives other people to want to get engaged. Any other questions or ideas or things that people are doing already on their campuses? If, if, if we do have any of the um, <laughs> people from um, colleges of art and design who are um, who are still with us. Uh, I'd be interested just in, in any thoughts that you had from listening today, whether um, you thought that this is a, a viable approach for, for your college. Well, that, that was a real conversation. Hearing so. none. Um, thanks for joining us today. We do this every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. New York time. Uh, we are very eager to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with any of you, Tobias, David, myself, lots of good ideas. Um, you know, as I said, we're all busy, but that's not an excuse. I mean, you know, 2023 is here. The years keep rolling by. We keep not reducing emissions. Um, and our students need to be, we need to move them beyond the state of climate climate despair and disengagement. They all understand climate change. It's not basic science. They get the science. They understand. They know what's happening. 
but they're, they don't know what to do, right? They don't know how to engage. And, and that ranges, I, I think as educators, the main way we can engage with them is get them excited about addressing climate change in the context of the disciplines that excite them. So, you know, I like economics, I can be a climate economist. I like psychologists, I can use those psychology skills to address climate despair. Um, I'm, you know, a dancer, I can choreograph dances that, you know, raise people's awareness and engagement with climate change. And I think that is the avenue, the logical avenue for us as educators to, to uh, help students realize that this is their future and a good way to spend their lives is working on this, you know? Um, and it's a, a way to make a real impact on the planet. Um, so with that, uh, you guys are, are in our mailing system now. You'll be hearing from us. Please do reach out to colleagues. Tell them about the event at 9 p.m. tonight. They, if you like this conversation and you think other people that would like to hear something similar. David, what is the highlight tonight? Obviously, we're not redoing the exact same thing. No, it's going to be more of a continuation of discussion. And so we'll have a, a chance to... Uh, some of the, the MassArt uh, faculty members will be there. So it'll be a chance to kind of talk to them a little bit more about how they did it, what they did, what they're thinking, how, how to engage uh, student bodies, et cetera. Deborah also kindly will be with us again and can give us more of the broader contact of the context of the colleges of arts and design. And then next week we've got, is that climate comedy and theater? No, ne next week, um, we're going to be talking about our youth development programs, uh, including oh, right. our uh, um, Global Youth uh, Summit that will be taking place uh, virtually on February 4th. Um, the February 1st webinar will be about theater and comedy, and then February 8th, we're going to be talking about how to make climate a class at your institution. Great. So a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, and the most important thing is, you know, join us, right? Sign up today, do something. If it's only, a, you know, having a few students, you know, join together at a, at a table in a dining hall, whatever, make something happen. Um, and uh, look forward to working with you. Okay. Bye-bye.